Good afternoon. It's just Paul today. And I'm going for a walk by myself, which is something that I have not done in a long time, and certainly not recorded it in a long time. Back when we lived in Saginaw, this is a thing I would do all the time. Um, for some periods of time when I was under extreme stress, uh, I would record my walks every morning, like for a few weeks, I think. Um, I did a countdown to the solstice where I recorded a every day. Um, we lived in a downtown area with sidewalks. We call it an inner ring suburb, I guess. It was in the city proper. And um, on Adams Boulevard, there was a nice long stretch of street to walk down and I could do laps basically and I could walk a few miles in the morning before work. Some of these became a series that I, there's a, I'm checking out the dog, some of these became a series that I called Morning Valediction of Monologues. But uh, yeah, anyway. I'm recording this um, not so much in the hopes that anyone in particular will get anything out of it, but um, as a, a record and an opportunity to sort of focus my own thoughts a bit. So uh, did I probably give the date already? It's Friday, it's April 3rd, 2020. Let's see. Uh, I haven't really left the house. I don't think I've driven anywhere or been driven anywhere for nearly three weeks. I think the last time I went out was um, three Mondays, <laughs> two Mondays ago. So uh, anyway, it was the Monday when I was... Uh, told that I was being furloughed from my job and that was my last day. Um, that evening I went out with Grace to my office and uh, we picked up some, some things from my office including a plant that I wanted to bring home and some of my personal books and stuff like that. And then at that point, we were basically, well, from from that previous, like it had been a Friday a week uh, before that, we had been basically on lockdown of a kind. Um, I had been working from home and not really going anywhere at all. Um, we had, yeah, anyway, I don't remember the dates. I don't really remember the dates, but uh, it's been a long time, <laughs> and it's uh, much has happened in the world. So, um, I've done uh, two podcasts with Grace since this all started. The this week, uh, it's starting to feel. Trying to feel it more, I guess. <coughs> um, the deaths are starting to become significant. The height of the exponential curve is becoming really disturbing. Um, I'll, I, I don't even know where we're at. And I don't trust these numbers. I'm wearing my uh, Vibram five fingers and this was a bit of a mistake because 
I'm walking on a dirt road that's covered with sharp chunks of rock and these soles are not really made to handle that. Well, we'll see how it goes. So we were, uh, so it's been, I think it's been about three weeks since we got groceries. Um, with the exception of a couple of uh, boxes of things that were delivered, we got some uh, some shelf stable, or at least long lasting um, packages of bread. It's like this German fitness bread that's packaged up and lasts a long time. Uh, we have canceled those orders. We were trying to order it like a couple different types and stagger them weekly delivery. So we were getting a box a week. Um, that was Joy's project. And she had an order from Amazon. Um, Grace and I have been boycotting Amazon for a number of years now. So, you know, it wouldn't have been our choice to do it that way, but uh, she's trying to help and it's been very helpful. But uh, Amazon's really blowing this and really uh, um, harming their employees with their practices and firing people for trying to organize uh, unions. So, so we're not like even our even our, in our duress, we decided we're going to cancel that order and uh, not support Amazon anymore. Even for that. So, we did just get a box from a company called uh, Imperfect Produce. I think that's Im Imperfect Foods. I don't, I don't even know for sure what it's called. But it's produce that is uh, like scarred up um, not suitable for uh, the public to buy when displayed at Whole Foods or whatever uh, and actually it looks great it's all fine there's nothing wrong with any of it I was very impressed it was so we're getting some vegetables that way and I think we're going to continue to get vegetables that way every week um, they have other food but really that's what we're short on right now is veggies um, also protein so we're starting to run short on our stocks of frozen uh, meats even though uh, we don't eat a huge amount of meat you know steak is a rare treat kind of thing um, and we don't buy ground beef ever. Um, but we very often have meals that are like made with broth, rice made with broth and, and or butter, sometimes both. <laughs> um, and sometimes things like black eyed peas with a uh, frozen ham hock um, sometimes like a, a we had a curry like a, a a curry dish that had some some uh, country ribs cut up in there so we'll do that uh, a few times a week we'll augment uh, a dinner dish with with a bit of meat We've got teenagers, and um, it's a little difficult to get everyone eating enough protein uh, entirely from rice and beans and things like that, especially when we don't. Most of us don't eat any form of dairy most of the time. I'll eat a little cheese. We've had a little cheese, but uh, it makes the kids sick so we don't keep a lot in the house and it's almost all gone 
I've also been trying to basically use this opportunity to do like the intermittent fasting that I've talked about before in my newsletter and whatnot. Um, but for the last few days, I've been pushing it a little too hard. So like yesterday, I was kind of bad off because I had only tea and then got towards uh, in the afternoon, the kids um, put some potatoes in the instant pot and I had uh, just like a boiled potato with salt and pepper and a little bit of butter mid-afternoon and that just collapsed my blood sugar like um, I just was, I was shaky and dizzy and just like no good no, no good so I can't it basically reminds me that I have figured out the way I need to eat that keeps me feeling good and strong and able to deal with stress and it involves um, more than I think most people's usual quantity of fat of fats um, so that if I'm having so I'll have eggs um, I haven't had eggs in several weeks that used to be my go-to breakfast out but we're not doing that so um, no eggs and I really miss them it's kind of messed up my diet to not have eggs uh, we would do a bulletproof coffee I would get the fat from, from fat and protein from the eggs or we would do a bulletproof coffee and I wouldn't need to eat for a number of hours for breakfast which has an, a huge amount of butter and uh, coconut oil in it um, I also have been having some of this like a couple slices of this German bread like toasted and then with butter and peanut butter or nut butter and that would keep me that's a lot of fiber it's it's uh, full of seeds and nuts it digests slowly it has a fair amount of protein with the peanut butter or whatnot so that would keep me going until dinner if I had that for breakfast so anyway but yesterday I kind of screwed it up and realized that I haven't been paying enough attention to um, what I've been eating like planning it out you know so I have to plan that out just a little better um, we'll probably go out to look for food uh, gloved and masked and all that on Monday uh, m Monday afternoon we're trying to find off-peak hours at the Costco and stuff like that so There it is. Um, it's a while to wait, but I want to get some uh, some more proteins that we can, you know, we're not getting steaks. Uh, I, we hear that there are meat shortages in a lot of stores because people are uh, are stocking up, or probably stocking up more than they need to for the short term, like per week or per two weeks which could be a problem for us um, we still have tons of rice we have like we probably have 75 pounds of rice uh, short grain brown rice and it's really good it's Lundgren short grain brown rice uh, soaks up broth or whatnot really well nice and chewy nutty flavor great with just about anything um, we need more still cut oats uh, yeah I have to watch my carbs if I have carbs they have to be something slow to digest like still cut oats or 
you know, whole whole brown rice in the instant pot. Um, and I have to make sure that when I eat carbs, I also eat uh, a fair amount of fat. Otherwise, my blood sugar crashes badly. It's set. It's sort of the opposite of diabetes, um, hypoglycemia. But uh, I have. I'm trying to figure out how much weight I'm losing. I need to look at the last uh, paperwork I had from my doctor's office, but it could be um, it could be as much as 20 pounds so far. I don't know for sure. I believe I so last Monday I weighed myself and. Is that true? When was that? I'm losing track. Anyway, I have it written down. Um, I had lost, I think, 10 pounds, and I've, I know I've continued to lose weight. My Some of my pants are just sagging. Um, but it doesn't, you know, doesn't matter all that much because I've been wearing uh, sweats <laughs> every day. So anyway, it's being at home around the clock is hard on me. Uh, it's hard for me to adjust. I, my, it's not, it's not the programming of like being out of the house to work at least eight hours is sort of encoded in more than just my brain. It's like encoded in my body, you know. My body feels like things are wrong if I'm not, like, working at a computer on weekdays. Um, so I'm trying to figure out some uh, regular stuff that I can work on while still trying to be extra support more so than usual for the kids and the household. And it's a tough balancing act for uh, someone who's really quite introverted and really doesn't, gets very stressed out among kids making their usual noise and chaos in the, in the evenings especially. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to navigate that. This is why I wanted to go for a walk by myself today. I just wanted to sort of sit with my thoughts. So, uh, in a sort of formal scheme of things, where do things stand? Uh, no word on how things are going at Thor Labs my employer, or whether it's still, uh, anyone thinks it's still possible that they will rehire the engineers from the Ann Arbor office that they laid off. Um, I have been approved for unemployment, but I haven't gotten a payment yet, and we quarantined our mail, so it was in quarantine for a few days, three days, but um, t yesterday I got it out from, of quarantine and there was a document from them demanding that I prove my identity, that I verify that I am the one who applied online. And so I had to, I was kind of in a panic because they wanted a passport. I don't have a valid passport. It's long since expired. I don't even know if I can put my finger on the old one. Um, or Michigan driver's license and either a, see as a program, I want to put parentheses around the ands and ors to make it clear the order of precedence. Um, either a birth certificate or a original social security card. Um, I wasn't sure I could find my birth certificate. It's not the, it's not something I've had to dig out in a long time. But I was able to find it today. It was in one of my 
files of papers in the storage room. So uh, there's that. I'm not sure where my social security card is. It's probably in a similar place and I really need to try and find that. But uh, yeah, anyway, they want you to fax it. <laughs> I'm like, uh, that ain't happening. Um, yeah, a few years ago when I had to fax stuff for this uh, for the state for job applications, I had a an online account. I was paying f briefly for a, an account with a fax service thing where you could send them PDFs and they would fax them or upload them images and they would fax them. Um, yeah, we don't have and receive faxes too. Um, and actually I used that service to get some old information off an Apple Newton that had fax capability. That was the only way I could figure out how to get some of these like mixed documents sent. Um, couldn't really email them in a format that I, I, I was getting email out of a Newton before using an old pop like pop account and some sort of updated software anyway it's not important I'm rambling but um, in both ways this is called I'm taking a ramble uh, anyway um faxing yeah like so they don't have any facility for sending them a, a scanned images or for doing a the kind of um digital signature thing that that uh you're you do when you like sign a mortgage or do uh, transactions with your bank need to fill out a form or something most of them can just have you use something like DocuSign, i think service is called And just, you know, you do some kind of digital signature magic and they accept it as good enough. So, no, they don't have anything like that. They're way behind in technology. Um, so, uh, the alternative is to mail it, which meant that I had to get my scanner working and see if I could make images of my driver's license and birth certificate and fortunately that still worked the scanner software is old and weird um, I bought it in you know it's the scanners from 2008 uh, so but it worked um, it's I'm not sure it, I was afraid it wouldn't work right under my current Mac OS X and I might have to go looking for like a an upgrade or something for the but it worked so I got that I got the, all that bundled up and mailed my verification scan of my driver's license and um, notarized copy of my birth certificate I I'd been I've said this probably told this before but the, the document that I had used be for years as a birth certificate was a hospital birth certificate which not a state issued birth certificate so I was carrying around a notarized copy of the hospital issued birth certificate dated 1988 which so I must have needed that back in college at some point um, and I have the original now since my mom died uh, but that's not that doesn't count so in i was applying for a passport in 93 maybe um i don't even know early 90s very early 90s i had to request from the state of washington uh a notarized an official copy of my birth certificate and that's what i have 
So that's what I sent them. And this all has to be due, this all is due by the 10th, next Friday, which makes me very nervous. I wish I had taken that out of quarantine earlier, but we're trying to save our lives here. So, um, so I didn't, but I really hope it gets to them. They accept it and process it because we need money. So yeah, just, okay. So to put everything in perspective, um, we're, we're pretty well off right now. Uh, compared to so many people because I had just received a federal tax refund and we had not spent that much of it. I spent some portion of it on things like I got uh, like uh, some free weights, you know, a few hundred for this and a few hundred for that. But uh, most of it had gone into the Team One account or been set aside uh, to cover gardening expenses. And there's still a chunk of that, which we want to go ahead and spend because we're trying to get our garden up and working. Our gardens, beds, plural. <coughs> um, what am I saying? Okay, so... So we, we had some money. We had a little extra money, no, more than we usually have um, when the shit hit the fan. Um, I received one more week's pay with an extra day tacked on. That was it. Um, I didn't get um, my paid time off paid out or anything else because I was not actually terminated. So basically, the day I was told I was being... Uh, put on furlough, that was my last paid day. So, uh, anyway, so the next day I immediately started contacting everyone we pay money to. The biggest one being Wells Fargo, trying to uh, get our mortgage suspended, mortgage payments suspended. They were very slow to respond. Um, but eventually told me they would give us like 90 days uh, forbearance or something. What that means is they won't start foreclosure proceedings or report it as late or on my credit report or charge us late fees. However, it just extends our mortgage and all the interest is still accumulating and will be dumped on in, probably in a rather large lump. Um, so we'll be essentially going backwards on our mortgage for a while, um, which is a horrible feeling. Uh, I'm hoping something better comes along, right? Hoping some kind of interest forbearance or, or even just, you know, mortgage payments are covered by the federal government for everyone forced into losing work due to the COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic. So, uh, I also contacted all the other, like two credit card companies and uh, Team One being one of them, and also contacted them about our consumer loan and we're on forbearance on all these various bills. They're all suspended in the sense that, um, again, they won't hit us with late fees or um, et cetera, or report us to credit agencies for 60 to 90 days, but no word of anything at all, how anything at all is gonna function past that. I'm not actually looking for work. Um, I have gotten a couple of people contacting me about, hey, would I take a remote job as a database administrator or whatnot? And I'm like, um, let me think on it because I don't want to do badly at a job that a friend of mine tried to get me, you know? And I'm not interested in database work. Uh, 
it's not my area of specialty. I haven't done database work in a long time. So, anyway, um, tried to suspend basically every payment we possibly could. I just got a text saying that um, our automatic uh, withdrawal for our cell phone bill is suspended. Um, I don't know how long I can have them suspend it before they uh, Go see your Go on, Otis. Go on. See you later. Sorry. No problem. Anyway, I'm so used to being accosted by dogs when I'm out walking that it barely phases me anymore. So, Otis's mom is uh, trying to get him to go for a walk. He doesn't want to. So, um, where was I? I'm not sure how long I can uh, pay for uh, uh, what? I, I'm not sure how long how long I can suspend some of these bills. Um, some of them just would not shut it off. Like, I was supposed to call, like, the day before it was due or something like that. Well, I guess I'll... for our energy bill. Um, and, you know, I guess I'll do that. But it's just... It's just a lot of... It's a lot of mental... Uh, work and anxiety to try and like be looking at, at uh, all these bills laid out into the future with zero income since uh, my furlough day and try to figure that out and try to figure out what I'm going to do about it so Not even sure what road I'm on. Some of these are private drives. I don't think I'm on a private drive. But maybe I could be. I do see other people out walking, biking, driving, etc. Just for kicks or to walk their pets. So it's encouraging, but mostly it's pretty damn quiet. I wanted to come out because it's nice and sunny. I think I need a little vitamin D. I should have been taking vitamin D <laughs> uh, capsules, but this is uh, homemade stuff and it's probably it's probably better. So uh, let's see. So I, I started on an open source project. Um, I'm going to adapt some ideas that have been kicking around in my head for a long time um, on uh, how to uh, write a simplified, more robust version of the <coughs> um, of what? Uh, Skippy. The a simplified version of the Skippy instrument control protocol. Uh, and I'm going to do it by basically uh, 
it's going to be a library of code that is designed to run on small micros and use data from EEPROM or Flash um, and it will uh, it will look up bytes as they come in in a command and those bytes will be pre the, the, the characters will be looked up in a pre-sorted uh, compressed try structure that I will generate off the micro and load it onto the micro probably into EEPROM you know I'll start with testing in RAM but um, yeah anyway that's the idea and basically the the open source Skippy implementations that I've looked at that are supposed to be are basically all I've been able to find they're okay um, they're really designed for for PC implementation they uh, and they uh, expect you'll have um, a whole like they expect you'll be able to do memory allocation um, if you can't you can build it and do its own allocation but it's still doing allocation out of a fixed like memory block or something and it's just it's overkill for what I want I'm running on a very small micro it works but it's using up too much code space and it's also um, I'm not gonna say it's really buggy I'm gonna say that it's really easy to crash it and get bizarre behavior out of it um, bizarre unexpected behavior and it's not even clear what the expected behavior is because the documentation and samples don't actually show realistic use cases of the different features so someone wrote it to use for a project and they maintain you know maintain it and use that project but it hasn't been properly like um, I'm gonna say in my opinion has been properly documented and vetted and like arranged to use in a different you know for for other people so I'm gonna try and do something simpler and more humble that is optimized to uh, to run on small micros um, it's gonna delete a, a lot of features that I never use and don't need in favor of being compact and easy to test and using up less uh, flash space for code and less memory at runtime. So how's that? It's called um, remotely controllable and uh, I've barely gotten going on it. Um, that's part of what I'm trying to do is okay I need to keep my brain busy let me keep myself working on something that's visible each day and since I'm forbidden from working on any Thor Labs projects um, I'll work on this and I'll make it an open source project and uh, conveniently enough if I am rehired by Thor Labs I'll be able to use it to improve this open source project to uh, to improve our application code how nice Thor Labs will not have paid me to work on it and I will not have worked on it with any Thor Labs equipment other than my brain which they do not own per se and Skippy is an open standard it's not proprietary so there it is uh, 
that's what I'm trying to spend time on each day, but I find myself getting, let's face it, obsessed with uh, politics and the news. Instead, go figure, as well as nervously obsessing about our money spreadsheets and how we're going to get by. And, you know, it's really far from just me that I'm and our family that I'm concerned about. Um, this is... I've been trying to figure out, like, what's likely to happen in the long term. Let me see how much time I've used. Okay, I've still got a lot of recording time, but... Um, I'm trying to figure out what this means for the future, like where this is going to go. I've been very, very aware, basically all leftists, uh, people who consider themselves to be radicals, um, radical leftists and intellectuals of any kind, which is how I identify myself now, um, that our country was broken, you know, deeply, deeply broken. Uh, and we've been long hoping to, and I, I've been long hoping to sort of like downshift into a more local, localized life, you know, a less expensive, less expansive life. Um, when we moved to Saginaw, I hoped that I could do remote work and consulting gigs that would pay for our life there. Um, and we really were sort of... The only thing is, in Saginaw, I never found a community of any men that I could understand or relate to in any way, you know? almost no one um, and the, when I did they would uh, tend to move away because everyone's still leaving so I just never formed any ties there to any anyone outside our uh, immediate family extended family with Grace's family but that was about it so yeah, so I always felt working in isolation was, you know, go figure, very isolating. <laughs> um, I never really got a routine down as far as finding consulting gigs. Most employers just, despite all the articles and rhetoric about remote work most employers were just basically uh, um, didn't want to allow it they weren't interested in managing it They weren't interested in managing it, and they didn't want to, um, they didn't trust employees enough, even after years of service and years of contributions, to, to uh, allow it. So, you know, when my one job went with uh, electronics, I okay, think, Jesus starting to fade <laughs> went south um, it's very difficult to find any other work um, that I could even consider support, would you know rem even remotely pay for the cost of supporting my family even in a place with dirt cheap real estate right but not just paying our mortgage but like maintaining the house and fixing it up you know um, with no community, it just constantly felt like this lonely burden, you know, um, and no coworkers to ever see, right? So, 
Um, yeah, I did consulting gigs uh, for a little while. I worked at Dow for a little while. Um, but that just wasn't sustainable because of the lack of, of work. So we're here now. Um, and I had high hopes of after we finally sold our old house, which took two and a half years, I had high hopes that we would basically be now gradually getting ourselves into a much more financial, much improved financial situation, despite having a very expensive mortgage, right? Like more than twice our old one. Um, that that I would be able to uh, put more down on it, like pay the principal down. I'd be able to like put money into the house and uh, in the gardens and all this. That basically I would be, I would have a discretionary income, extra income that I could use, you know, to make us more secure, right? And such that even if I lost my current, well, it's this furloughed job, I could actually take something that paid less and still be okay, still be fine, you know. But uh, then this pandemic came about and companies were not ready they were not at all prepared um, the federal government was not ready not at all prepared maliciously underprepared um, managed by vicious morons um, and the response is still pathetic. It's the response is still um, horrifying. I mean, genocidal. I was just reading today about the proportion, the proportionate effects of COVID-19 on on blacks compared to whites and Hispanics and all this, and it's horrifying. This is real, like, um, race war shit. This is like, um, what is that novel? The Turner Diaries level shit going down here. Um, basically, a huge port of the po portion of the population can't afford not to die from this and um, so far we've been able to afford not to die from this but it's uh, it's a real big open question as to where this goes after the next couple months It's going to take at least another three weeks to receive food benefits. Uh, I don't know when I'll get a first unemployment check deposit, you know. Um, just don't know. Hey, I see some of my kids out walking. So... Joshua and Sam are out walking and Sam is carrying baby Malachi on his back. He's such a mensch. He's a good brother. We've been trying to get the kids out in groups to go out walking every day with their younger siblings. Um, about this time, they're actually a little late, so that um, Grace can get some, get started on cooking. Hi guys. Hello. Hi guys. Okay. 
Uh, many days they fight us and are very slow and late to get out. Um, but it's happening. Starting to settle into a routine. Starting to settle down a bit. So, what was I saying? Who am I? Who are you? Where are we? I'm so grateful for a nice day with the little sun. I'm supposed to get out and assemble some, some garden beds. I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. I was going to try today, but... I got caught up and was just so nervous about getting this, these documents out for, um, for unemployment. Well, I got that out. Um, what my fear is that, you know, there are like five million people in Michigan um, who've been filing over the last, I don't know, probably not five million, but uh, over the last couple, two, three weeks, hundreds of thousands of people in Michigan are uh, filing unemployment claims. It's like blown up all previous records and it's just completely off the charts and they're just not prepared to handle it. So I am hoping that somehow they can actually process the paperwork quickly enough that I meet the, the deadline. The, of the 10th. Um, I don't want to I don't want to miss that deadline because they had the paper in, you know, a giant bin but didn't process the verification paperwork quickly enough and so the system kicked it back out as a rejected and I suspect that's actually a distinct possibility so I could have sent it by fax or mail or I could have driven to they call them the special problem resolution offices there's a URL in the letter that I got if you go to and it says look under th this tab or whatnot um, if you go to that URL it redirects you to a different URL that doesn't have that tab or any or in, that text nowhere to be found so I had to google some some other resources some other web pages not provided or generated by the state of Michigan to show me supposedly where the nearest problem resolution center is for me to like take the paperwork in person and surprise surprise it's in downtown Detroit like just yards I think from the uh, I don't know. It could be. I'm not sure it's exactly nearby. It's, it's close um, to the downtown. Um, used to be called Cobo Hall, the convention center where they are setting up where the uh, Corps of Engineers, I guess, I'm not sure, has set up a uh, mobile field hospital for COVID-19 cases overflow from from uh, the hospital system already melting down without PPE and without enough ventilators to keep people alive during this. So I don't really want to go there. 
<laughs> no matter, even in a homemade mask, you know, I don't think that's a good idea. So I just am hoping that this works out and I actually start to get, um, start to get payments soon. Um, I suspect a clusterfuck. I suspect it'll I'll get bounced out of it and told I can reapply in 90 days or some bullshit like that. Just a cluster, clusterfuck. And then, you know, I can try and appeal the decision and they're like, well, we didn't process your paperwork in time or we didn't, it wasn't postmarked in time because the mail is piling up because postal workers are ill or whatever. <sighs> anyway, I probably should have risked um, contamination for our household to pluck that piece of mail out of quarantine early and give myself an extra uh, three days to handle it. But I didn't because I'm trying to be as cautious as I can reasonably be. And I judge that dealing with written paperwork from the unemployment office was less critical than actually keeping our family free of COVID-19 infection. I hope I was right. So, I'm coming up on an hour. Basically, I've been on one road. I just walked, like, to Crane Road, like, almost to the end, and I turned around when I ran into the, the dog. Um, but still been on Crane Road. It's probably, I don't know how far that is. I'll have to look on him. I, I didn't remember where the cross street was or I turned around. I should look on a Google Google map or something. See how far that is. So, so some like calibrate my walks. Um, but uh, coming up on an hour. It's such a beautiful day out. I think we just got mail, and so I might, I don't have gloves with me, but I'm, uh, do I want to try and handle it, carry it back, put it in quarantine, and then immediately wash my hands? I don't know if I can do that safely, so maybe I'll ignore it until tomorrow. Maybe I'll peek. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Paranoid or not paranoid enough. I'm actually kind of terrified of going out grocery shopping. Not so much on my own behalf. I suspect I probably could survive um, an infection because I could immediately, if I'd suspected that I was infected, I could immediately start quarantining upstairs. Um, and I know that as long as Grace is not down with it herself, which she probably would be, but you know that um, we have lots of vitamins and broth and other things to help uh, charge up my immune system. <sighs> But I don't want to find out because I'm hearing from, you know, people that this is a devastating illness and it can have long-term uh, effects on your body even if you recover.
So we really want to be as cautious as we possibly can, not just as like it seems reasonable, but like it should seem unreasonable. And we're watching, still watching um, the death rate double every two or three days. The number of deaths double every two or three days. It doesn't seem unreasonable to me at all to take fairly extreme precautions. So, there we are. wearing a really ripped up ratty tie-dyed t-shirt so I probably don't look like a, a respectable neighbor to any of our neighbors it doesn't look like the mail came because the flag is still up even though I saw a mail truck up here so probably there's no mail anyway um, really hoping to get this it's only going to Grand Rapids, right? I could, I could practically drive it there. But um, I'm not going to. <laughs> Although it might be nice to get out for a brief road trip. Anyway, I think we'll probably, we're putting together shopping lists. I really wish we had our food benefits um, arriving now because then we could spend that money um, next week instead of uh, our digging into our savings, which is what I'm going to have to do. But um, yeah, anyway, we're going to try and do a major grocery day like every two weeks. And I think we're going to go on Monday, believing that 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 maybe is a uh, lower um, traffic day, but we might call Costco and call GFS and say, when is low traffic? Um, yeah. So, given that given that we can't buy WIC stuff anyway, we shouldn't be interfering with anyone getting wick stuff so hopefully we'll be getting wick stuff before long that could do a huge amount to preserve our our uh, our cash the cash we have on hand for the short term okay I'm uh, gonna shut this down I don't know if I'm gonna post this or what I'm going to do with it, but um, yeah, I hope you all are staying sane. I think this is like, uh, today was the day when I felt like it was really um, starting to damage my my sanity. It takes a long time, I'm very patient, but it's um, starting, to, to, starting to get to me. So, yeah, and of course every twinge or cough or sneeze or feel, is that already knows, you know, or is that a, what do I feel, whatever. We're like, oh my God, do we have it? We have been almost per completely isolated, but, you know, um, Joy has run out. She ran out to try and meet up with some people. She's arranged to meet up with to pick up a sewing machine and she had like laid down the law with them on how they were supposed to stay you know 10 feet apart and just like not touch anything and uh, you know at least I don't know what she said but completely no contact like meeting and drop off stuff and pick up stuff like take it out of the car set it down go back get back in the car <laughs> I'll come and pick it up with gloves on, put it in the back of my car, we'll wave to each other, and that'll be it. But they, like, apparently came out all bubbly and, you know, friendly and, like, just not uh, not seeming to show the slightest concern for getting close. And she was really pissed. And I don't blame her. 
she's 60 something um, she's the one in our household who's more most likely to to die if uh, she is infected so we're all trying to keep her safe too anyway back home yeah grace is like i'm dizzy at my heart's racing is this anxiety uh or am i sick like no one's sure so and you know i've been having on and off tachycardia and whatnot for 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 weeks <laughs> okay i hope you all are well and sane and that we all as many of us as possible get through this I love you all. Goodbye.